It's called 510-601-4871. Tilden Regional Park's Botanic Garden will be hosting its annual plant sale on Saturday, April 16th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Get expert gardening advice and purchase plants not found at local nurseries. For directions to the park and more information, call 510-841-8732 or visit nativeplants.org. The community calendar is produced by members of the KPFA Apprenticeship Program. Send your listings at least three weeks in advance to KPFA, Box 51, 1929 Martin Luther King Jr. Way in Berkeley, California, 94704, or fax them to 510-848-3812. Attention to the community calendar. Tell us if your event is wheelchair accessible. To hear this calendar again, call 510 510- 848-6767, extension 621. That's 510-848-6767, extension 621. The community calendar is also available online at www.kpfa.org. You are listening to 94.1 KPFA. KPFB in Berkeley, and 88.1 KFCF in Fresno. Stay tuned for Apex Express. Apex Express, Asian Pacific Expression. Cultural coverage, music and calendar, new visions and voices. Coming to you with an Asian Pacific Islander point of view. It's time to get aboard the Apex Express. Hello out there to everybody on this beautiful spring night. My name is G and on the board is Curtis. Curtis, how you doing out there? I'm going to open it up because, you know, I know you've had a hard week. How you doing over there? I'm doing fantastic. Okay, you better watch those levels, man, because your 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 voice is loud and strong. So we're gonna be we're gonna be talking here with different folks tonight. And I know I surprised Curtis, but I'm gonna keep surprising you. I'm keeping you on your toes tonight. I'm all for it. Okay. Um, tonight on Apex, we'll hear voices of the disappeared in America. It's part of an exhibit of the same name. And we're also going to learn about reparations records real soon. Also, we're going to be having youth voices from the API Youth Institute that's coming up. Plus, music calendar and more. My name is G, and to start off, I'd like to welcome Anita of Reparations Records. How are you doing? Great. Thanks for having us. You know, uh, Reparations Records, I think it's been around for about five years, and it offers a mix of uh, music productions, uh, job training, free studio time, free studio time. I don't know how many times I should say that. <laughs> you know, all these people are going to run out there. Uh, DJ skills. You've got uh, a class on dance, spoken word, video production, vocal training, uh, so many things. Uh, you guys got started out, uh, like I said, about five years ago. Uh, as you were telling me, uh, three Asian American women got together. I think you were one of them. Uh, is that right? Um, actually, I wasn't one of the first folks oh, who got sorry. it together. But um, we used to be called the Mandela Art Center. Mm-hmm. And um, basically, it was this woman by the name of Tina Bartolome, um, Omana Amani, and um, actually Sake One, who is a DJ out here, a really popular hip hop DJ out in the Bay. Um, and all, all of them were part of a crew that all of us were part of, um, Underground Railroad. And basically, um, from that organization um, came the idea to what we were doing was basically um, producing shows and products in the Bay Area that really were trying to um, spark people's imaginations Mm -hmm. and um, make people feel good and feel like they're having a good time and listening to good music at the same time. And we kind of realized that once there, one, there was a um, a vacuum um, for... um, any kind of a hip hop or urban expression for young people there was a there was a void of safe challenging places for them and um that we needed a space like Mandela Art Center and what has happened is that it has transformed into reparation records we actually mm-hmm. 
worth um, in uh, located in West Oakland, and we just moved to downtown Oakland um, in January mm-hmm. and changed our name. You know, uh, you were saying that um, right now you're thinking of trying to go eventually becoming self sufficient without the grant thing, and that's Absolutely. pretty amazing given you know how it's so difficult. Uh, for community-based organizations to do that, and I know you want to offer free, uh, free studio time and and really um, make this really accessible to a lot of youth who don't have that much money, and right. not only youth don't have that much money, but a lot of people who want to do this kind of uh, music mm-hmm. don't have a lot. So, how did that come about? I mean, how are you going to uh, actually get an audience that's willing to pay money? I mean, a lot of people are really supportive of like. You know, places like uh, Reparations Records. But when it comes to actually shelling out the bucks, how mm-hmm. are you going to get people to do that? Well, um, one thing I want to say, all our programs are free. We don't charge any money for anything. Um, and basically right now we're in a transition where we're relying halfway on um, foundation monies and grants. But we have a whole grassroots plan um things like throwing parties 21 and over parties all ages parties where there's a huge you know void of that there's just nothing for young people to do in the bay area after five (laughs) o'clock you know there's no safe places for them they can either kick it at jack london square or go to the side shows and both those areas Mm -hmm. just get really clamped down when it comes Mm -hmm. to young people being there the police get on them right away and you know basically are creating a situation where side shows are like deemed as this illegal criminal activity Mm -hmm. so um we're like we can do all ages shows. Have the you know, you know charge five dollars at the door. And do, with do the, it within month. your your reparations uh, reparations um, location, or you'd have no, to go out. No, we'd go uh-huh. we'd go outside our location and do it out in the community. Right. Um, so actually, within reparations record, you have a little studio. Maybe you want to talk about right. that. Yeah. Um, so we have um, a recording studio in reparations. We provide trainings there. Um, three days a week and basically um they're wednesdays from six to nine thursday from six to nine and friday from four to eight you are welcome um, anybody between the ages of 12 and 22 are welcome to come by during those times get trained we have reasons pro tools um we have one station that does production and recording and the other two stations do just pro- production mm-hmm. and if you know you're just interested in you know seeing what it's like or you're somebody who really knows what you want to do with your life i really encourage you to come by and check it out you can be someone who wants to get into the music aspect of it or you could be a poet or an MC or a singer or a storyteller just if you have a need to to ask for this mm-hmm. kind of technology come through you know this is why it's here it's here for for the community to come out and use it you know you gave us a, a track that one of the the youth had mm-hmm. worked on maybe you can tell us a little bit about that and then we can listen to it okay so one of the programs we have one thing we, we realized when we started off five years ago it was really about providing these um you know drop-in um or you know free classes for young people but we were also realizing that there needed to be like um some depth in the kind of relationships we were relating with young people um that drop-ins just weren't going to be the thing to do with so we started um creating pre-registered programs like 12 14 16 week long programs where it really gave us an opportunity to work really deeply with young people and have them start you know thinking about stuff that normally wouldn't think about give them the opportunity to work one-on-one with mentors whatnot and after that happened, we also re- realized that a lot of the young people out there, they don't need things like um, writing workshops. They don't need music production workshops. They are already talented. Mm-hmm. They are already skilled. What they need is access to technology. And so that became a whole other thing. We're like, okay, we're going to have you know, access to computers, access to studio, access to turntables, you know. <clears throat> And then the next step after that was like, well, what really needs to happen is that what the youngsters are telling us now is that they need help developing their careers. And so a program that we started two years ago was actually called Rapparation Records, and it was a youth record label. And the track that I'm going to be sharing with you all tonight is from one of um, the artists off the label. Um, His name is KV Kicking Every Verse. And um, he's hot. He's coming out. His um, full length is dropping on... July the 4th of this year. It's called Delete the Elite, and the name of this track is 96 Anticipated. Okay, so should we take a listen? Okay, here we go.
was Reparations Record, and in what it was was uh, uh, somebody who's a part of your program, actually, right. just, just did that up on their own. Um, I was thinking that you guys offer so much from productions, um, access to technology, um, I guess teachers, too, mm-hmm. right? And we also, um, besides doing the career development programs um, and community events, we also do job training and provide jobs for young people. Right. Um, for example, we have the record label program. We're the other thing, too, is with the record label program, every youngster who comes in and signs up, we take them through the whole process of how to start a fictitious business, business name for themselves. We teach them how to copyright stuff. So anything they make in our program, we don't own. We're not like a typical record mm-hmm. label. We're actually mm-hmm. trying to flip the whole idea of what a record label is supposed to do. Because most record labels... I thought labels, that's how you guys are going to make some money to survive. I don't know. We, we're, <laughs> with copyright we're, and trademark. Oh, you know, no, no, no. We're, we're not go. trying to pimp the young uh-huh. people. So... <laughs> So um, we like have an event production uh-huh. class. Um, basically, after 12 weeks of trainings and meeting people in the industry, the young people, um, we provide them with the funding and the support right. and the equipment to basically throw their own event. They keep 100% of the profits at the door. You know, I was just wondering, how do you actually give direction to these folks? Because I know that a lot of the youth, you know, they actually, a lot of people with Pro Tools and the technology becoming cheaper and people just having more access to it and getting their hands on it a lot faster. What people also seem to lack, I think, is direction and a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you find that you need to do that with folks to direct it and and content-wise and kind of direct people away from, like, there's all this stuff about, you know, a lot of different stuff out there that's not that healthy in the music and stuff, right? So do you find that you, you're thinking about doing that or you have to do that or you just kind of hands off on it? Um, we we have a mix of uh, youngsters who are all at different stages in their lives. We um, have been fortunate to have some really powerful young young people come through and who really are focused and really have a good sense of, like, what's healthy for them, what's healthy for the community. And um, then we have folks who you know, are still caught up in negative behaviors, who are caught up in what they see on TV and can't think outside the box. And so we definitely do mentoring, mm-hmm. no doubt. You know, we... Um, don't try to talk down to people. We don't try to lecture people. We try to, you know, just have, you know, those one-on-one discussions. And then when in some of the classes, for example, like the CD production class, music mm-hmm. production class, you know, um, they have to engage in lyric writing workshops. And I those see. lyric writing workshops. So do you teach that or who teaches those? Um, that particular class is being taught. Um, well, what we have right now is called a This is a Journey into Sound. Um, and that particular program is being taught by a brother by the name of um, Bessa the articulate he's with a group called firewada um he also runs our studio he's the studio manager um as well as the teacher for that project and so um and then there's also Corey's from the boogie shack who does the music production for that project and teaches mm-hmm. that and um basically you know he, t- he sets them down once once they have once a week of lyric writing and political discussions one day a week of music production training and then another day a week of just mm-hmm. you know putting it all together how many teachers are involved because you have here uh throw your own bomb event mm-hmm. and that's literally learning how to produce events promotions press security budget planning fundraising financial management in addition to your other programs i mean who who teaches that and and how many do, do teachers double you know oh yeah or? we're all like doubling and what tripling. do you teach um, I teach actually Baby Boogie, um, which is a, a dance a dance class uh-huh. for children five and under. And then I also teach. Um, we have um, an all, the all ages parties I was talking about. We have an internship program that lasts six months, and that uh, six months program is what I I run. Yeah, you know I was wondering. I was looking at your playlist. Number mm-hmm. one on that playlist, which one is that? Life by Ambry. Um, it's life um, called by a girl by the name of Ambui. Ambui. Um, she was 17 years old when she wrote it. Um, she later on became um, an intern, a staff person on the at the organization. She helped co-found the uh-huh. actual record label. Um, but she wrote this uh, three or four years ago. Should we take a listen to that? Or yeah, hopefully it'll be the right <laughs> track this time. <laughs> That's okay. Well, uh, why don't we take a, a listen to that track one off of that CD, something from Rapparations Records. And all of this, by the way, are, are self-produced by the, the youth. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a listen to this one. 
All right, ladies, lights out. I have a fear of the future. I can't stand being in the dark of my own life. When they keep telling me different things, like I'm gonna go to California Youth Authority, or that I'm just gonna get released, I have fears of how will I survive? See, if I get released, where will I go? How will I live? I'm 18 with no family or no friends. I'm fairly new to San Francisco and I can't go back to the past. I think every day I'm alone, alone in my mind. Will I make this, this game of life? I want to get out. I want to get out soon. When the lights go out, it's time to sleep. They turn off the lights, but keep the night light on. For whatever reason, I don't seem to know. The reflecting lights shine off the khaki mispainted wall off onto my face and the rum of the air vent sending penetrating vibrations that echo through my mind late into the night until finally I fall asleep. But ticking, ticking, finally my subconscious drops it and my conscious mind picks it up and shoots that one quick, strong, uncomfortable, prickling sensation down my spine to my fingertips till I feel like the serpent slithering through my mind, trying to make me insane from the rumming through the vent. The evil feeling is felt watching you, making you ever so impatient for something that will never come. Becoming, becoming, my mind caresses my body, putting me into a slumber, silent, painless sleep. I wonder what the judge is going to say. Man, I wonder when am I going to be able to be with my kids again? When they turn off the lights, I think about my kids and when I'm going to see them and when I'm going to visit them, when I am going to get out of this place and be able to be with my family. I also think about what am I going to do tomorrow. I also think about what is the judge going to say. I think about if I'm going to be sent to the California Youth Authority and how is it over there. And I also think about going back to school and going back to my job, and I wonder if it's going to be the same. God, give me the strength to follow through and be with me while I suffer my consequences, because there's no place like home. That was that was great, man. I mean, you know, that, that heartbeat and um, that was soundscaped. Uh, the first person with the echo on it, uh, mm -hmm. as you, you just mentioned, it was uh, recorded in Juvenile Hall, actually. Why'd you see it in Frisco? Yeah, you had a little bit of a story behind this one, too. Yeah, so that actually wasn't Ambui. That was um, the product out of a workshop that me and Ambui actually did together. Um, we had done some writing workshops with some youngsters, who, young women, young girls who were locked up at YGC. And we spent about, I think, 12 weeks with them and wrote, you know, did writing workshops with them, had them record in the halls. And then we also did some recording at, you know, the Reparation Records site. And um, they basically, as their friends were being let out of YGC, their friends would come and record for them because they're still locked up. So um, that was uh, the name of that CD that we had was called Girls in the Hall. Mm -hmm. And it was a six track CD. And basically, like you heard on that on that track, there were four or five different girls on that track. And basically, that's how all the tracks were. We would have like a theme for the day. They do writing. And then whoever felt comfortable and felt really juiced about trying to record their piece would come together with the other girls and they would record the pieces together. Wow. So you, do you still do programs like that where, you know, that's pretty intensive work with people? Yeah, we're not in YGC right now. Mm -hmm. That was, um, we had a, a contract with one of the programs in there for a year. And then they lost their funding to keep them doing it from there. Mm. So we'd like to go back in, but, yeah. You know. Any future plans similar to that? Or is it more just concentrated on your new space right in Oakland? And by the way, for right. folks who are interested in, it is in downtown Oakland, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, 387 17th Street in Suite 200. And um, so while we wrap this up, again, do you have any, you know, uh, plans like a long-term project? Or is the long-term project actually getting this new place settled in? And 
Um, the long-term project, well, you know, is to get this place settled in, um, get more youngsters to come through. Um, like you said, if you're looking for a job, particularly a job in the industry, whether it be a promoter, um, uh, a publicist, um, a uh, learning how to run a record label, learning how to run a community center, come through. Um, we do have positions for folks, internships for folks who are learning, okay, who would I like think to I'll learn. I'll go in and, and okay. <laughs> come on in. But I think our longer project, like you had uh, mentioned earlier, G, is that we eventually want to be self-sufficient. We'd eventually uh -huh. like to own a center. Right. right now, we're renting. We want to yeah. get a fat center that we own. That you know, we don't have to pay a landlord for no more, and you know. Yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> By the way, folks, this is Apex Express right here on KPFA and KPFB in Berkeley and KFCF in Fresno. And uh, to wrap this up, Anita, I was wondering if you could just give out contact numbers for folks. Sure. So you can give us a call at five one zero eight nine three two three three zero. Again, that was five one zero eight nine three two three three zero and our email is reparations r a p a r a t i o n s at yahoo dot com and basically if you're interested in any aspect of hip hop at all um whether it be the art piece of it the business piece of it or just the fun piece of it um come through and check us out um i also want to say that we're having an event this we do uh, an event every second Every mm -hmm. third Saturday of the month is a free movie screening. And this uh, Saturday from 2 to 4, we're going to be showing two movies. One is called The Freshest Kids. And basically, it's the history of breakdancing. And then it, basically from like the 1970s to the ni to 2000. And it's one of the tightest movies, not just about breakdancing, but just kind of about hip-hop in general. Mm -hmm. It's like the Godfathers mm -hmm. are there and the new people are there. And then we also will be showing I Have Mind, We Have Motion. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's... Um, a documentary about all the female MCs and DJs and B girls in the Bay Area. You know, let's just take another plunge and listen to something out, else as, as to end this this feature. You know, we're just gonna. As long as, do you know of any one of those that has seven, the seven dirty words in there? Because we cannot have that on there. No, I think they're all clean. Yeah. So you guys have been on people. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have a radio background too. Yeah. So why don't we just choose one? Why don't we ch choose outro? Which says, uh, let's choose cut number two then. This is another work by the youth from Rapparations Records. Right after that, we're going to go segue into hip hop from Japan. But first, let's listen to music from Rapparations Records. <laughs> should we give a damn, y'all? We should give a damn, y'all. Should we give a damn? We should give a damn. From the depths of my soul to my heart being broken. The things I've seen in the city of Oakland. Your son's dying and mothers are crying. You see, I'm only 20 and I've seen too much. I know times are hard and life gets rough. What? But there are no reasons for us to give up. Instead of walking with your head down, look up at the sky and ask why. Am I so damn blind through these tears of crap? Or is it that we don't want to see a fucked up life can be? Or is it that we know there are no guarantees? We live on false accusations and fake revelations. We need to build for our future. Stop living in the past so our future children to grow old and laugh. Oakland's supposed to be our city, what? so let's get ready. We ain't got forever in the day. The future what? can't be the same. We got to make the change. We got to make the change. Gotta make a change. We gotta make a change. Gotta make a change. Check it out. Living ain't easy in these scandal streets. So I want you back just to be free. The city of Oakland okay. ain't really your land. They say it is. Should we give a damn? Living ain't easy in these scandal streets. So I want you back just to be free. The city of Oakland okay. ain't really your land. They say it is. Should we give a damn? Give a damn. Oh, A K is where I. On the grass is where I lay most of the time Writing rhymes, leaving behind a negative state of mind That my folks want to keep inside of me Melting away my dreams like ice cream Sitting in the sun, turning my joyous tears into fears Hey yo, I'm still here Seeing clear with my third eye, got my head high, never high, cause I'm scoping that atmosphere. Let that bush be that son of a bush, cause when war strikes here, he ain't going to appear. Living ain't easy, in these ghetto streets, so watch your back just to be free. Your city, 
mama's fires are increasing. Folks are thieving, mothers are grieving cause they know the kids are leaving this earth as we speak. Folks are walking barefoot on the streets, begging and pleading on their knees for something to eat. Hoping and praying that the cops pick them up, but they don't give a buck. They'd rather leave them stuck in the cold with no heat. It's a shame that we blame the streets for leaving us the same. Don't spin your life in the house. Express right here on KPFA and KPFB in Berkeley, KFC, F in Fresno. And sorry for that bad word that you just heard, but we got a lot more good words coming up here on Apex Express, Asian Pacific Islander Radio, right here in the Bay Area. With us tonight, we're going to continue on the API Asian Youth. Uh, and culture tip here, we're going to have in the studio a bunch of folks. I'm sitting in here with a bunch of folks in the studios, four youth organizers, and they are here with, uh, I guess, a leader and mentor of the AFSC, American Friends Service Committee, Tony Wynn. And I want to say that this weekend they're going to be um, involved in a very big API Youth Institute conference, which handles all kinds of themes from uh, workshops led by youth, um, such as on drugs, such as on um, media image, and they're also going to have a big cultural event. And uh, these folks have been working real hard to actually organize uh, organize it as well. So um, just to say hello and to get familiar with your voices, uh, why don't you just introduce yourself really quick, starting on the, the far yellow microphone. We have, who is speaking now? Hi, I'm Nicole. Okay, and the person sitting next to Nicole, you want to get real close to this mic? Hi, I'm Wendy. I'm from uh, AAA, Dr. Nallyway. Okay. Hey, this is Tony Wynn with the American Friends Service Committee APAC program. And I know you're Jesse. Why don't you get real close, Jesse, and say hi. Uh, hi, my name is Jesse. I'm from Act 1, Aging Community Teens Organized for Neighborhood Empowerment. Hey, what's up? Uh, my name is Richard, and I'm with uh, AAA. Okay, I, I think I'm going to ask real quickly. You know, I talked with uh, Jesse a little bit last night about the uh, workshops and, and Jesse says that he's he may not be exactly an expert on drugs but he has had some quote unquote experience with drugs and, so, <laughs> and some awareness of it Slightly. <laughs> so that's going to be a big uh, 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 issue now I know you guys are focusing on Asian and uh, Pacific Islander youth and I was thinking about this thing about the drug workshop you know and you were saying it's not going to be a preachy kind of thing but it still is an issue among folks, right? I mean, there's there's drug issues in the community that's kind of kept under the rug, and um, things do happen. So how are you actually going to lay out, Jesse, you know, you, you, you don't want to encourage people to do this thing. How are you going to lay this out to folks, you know? Uh, pretty much we're not going to, like, encourage them to do drugs, but we're not going to, like, you know... <laughs> I didn't think you were, but... Yeah, neither are we going to, like, preach or anything. We're not going to just have the whole workshop on don't do drugs it's bad for you you know basically we're pretty much 
giving more of an awareness kind of ideal, like mm-hmm. more of like so then they could get to know of the effects of drugs, just so uh-huh. they could understand a little better. Okay, and I think you had some words to say too. Oh well, we just want to basically. We don't want to encourage, but if they do do it, we can't stop them. But we want them to know the risks, the effects, and what's in the drugs and what they're going to get into. Okay. And I also wanted to ask, though, if you're talking about drugs in the Asian Pacific Islander community, is that one of the big problems? Is that why you're having one of these workshops be about that? Or is it just, you know, like all youth conferences have to have something about drug awareness thing? I don't open that up to anybody. Uh, well, this is... It's not exactly the biggest, but this is really still a big issue in API youth culture. Cause then, like nowadays, like a lot of API youth, almost like every, but like a lot, will, like do do drugs. Like they will sometimes do weed or drink alcohol, and like kind of don't think or know what, what like the effects of it are. Uh, well, I mean, is it like it's it's? But is it a big deal? Um. You, you know, is it like something that uh, um, is devastating to like poor communities? Because I, I look at you guys, and you guys are all leaders in your own right. I mean, you're trained to be leaders. Mm-hmm. You're part of this leadership training. All you guys from different Asian organizations in the community, and you've gone through some amount of training. So I see folks like you who are in the future leadership, but aren't there a lot of youth who, I mean, how are you going to reach a lot of youth who see themselves as kind of, out of the loop, you know, kind of like losers. And sometimes drugs are real kind of, for them, that's the way they feel good, that's where their friends are at, you know. How, how are you going to do that? How are you going to relate to folks who, like, don't feel like they're leaders or don't feel like they have anything to lose? So, yeah, why don't we speak right here? Well, one of the things about drugs that it's it does not discriminate and it actually hits every one of us, and that's why it's so important. And also, with, uh, we... Everyone is an inner leader, and we feel that with the institute, we're able to bring that leader out of them. Mm-hmm. And because we're youth and they're youth, there's this kind of connection between us, so we could relate more to the issues that are concerning them. I see. Okay. So when you say institute, I'm gonna. That leads me to my next question to Tony here. Tony, uh, the institute that mm-hmm. you're involved with now, you yourself are um, in AFSC, American Friends Service Organization, and you're actually handling the whole Asian Pacific Island, Asian Pacific kind of reg, um, Program. region programming with youth. So, what what is this youth institute in a nutshell that you're involved with in this whole thing? On the what what for you in your mind is the importance of this? What makes it different from all the other youth conferences that are out there? Well, you know, the Bay Area is really uh, rich with uh, diversity of like Asian and Pacific Islander uh, young people and just communities in general. And um, the Institute aims to bring a lot of different Asian and Pacific Islander uh, young people together. So we have Vietnamese, Cambodian, Japanese, Chinese, uh, Samoan, you know, Polynesian folks all, all coming together, which is not something that you have. Uh, happen that often in the Bay, even though there's a lot of different groups out there working with certain ethnic groups within certain, you know, communities. But it's rare that you have folks from the East Bay, Oakland, you know, Richmond, folks from San Francisco, different districts coming together, young people coming together around certain issues that they feel are important. Mm-hmm. Now, the theme is of this Youth Institute conference is you think you know you think you know, but you have no idea what you know about. Is that, you know, is that right? You know? <laughs> uh-huh. It's actually life and culture of oh, it youth is. today. Life and culture of youth today. I, 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 I you, know, you know, you Oh, I see. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, I kind of... Oh, I see. So you guys are still organizing this thing. You know, I know I also in talking to, to um, Jesse, um, he was mentioning that there is another workshop also about uh, media images of, I guess, Asian and Pacific Islanders or Asian and Pacific people, youth. The youth image, um, and, and you said that there was something that you thought was going to be kind of interesting and kind of important. So how's that? How's that? Why is that? I mean, aren't there a lot of, now there's a lot of different kind of images of Asians out there, right? Or is it still like people have kind of images of that that are problematic for youth. What, what is it for you folks out there? Well, today, um, um, there are many stereotypes out there about these, how like uh, Asians look like. And, and in our workshop, we have this appropriation workshop. And we try to like uh, break down 
um, the stereotypes that are out there, and we try to and we um, let them focus on what we think that um, these stereotypes are, and we try to um, um, bas- basically. Um, well, what are the stereotypes? I mean, what, well, I mean, I mean like, do you think that like there's this? I mean, there's all kinds. In my mind, you know, you got people like who think they're gonna be a basketball star, like Yao Min, who's like seven yeah. foot some, you know. And you know, there used to be the stereotype Asians who are like five foot one. And then so you have like you know <laughs> these, these like you know martial arts heroes to like you know you got all kinds of things. So you, and you get these really stupid kind of images still, right? These very kind of. Fu Manchu and what we try to do is try to like break these gone. stereotypes yeah. down I guess we don't want to be labeled this and that I mean we're trying to build a better understanding of each other you think that that uh, people have a good feeling about who they are generally Asian and Pacific Islanders do you think folks like if you go to your high school do people feel good about them uh, I'm pretty sure not today I mean why not every day I mean even for myself every day I get off school you know it's kind of being bad like we get on the bus we get we're discriminated and yeah, we're kind of like scared to say anything because we feel kind of like like us uh, inferior to these pe- pe- other people on the bus, and so yeah, so we kind of feel scared and stuff. And what we trying to do, um, we want to um, guess um, speak out for them. What well, you say you felt inferior? I mean, do you feel like physically inferior no, or met no. or just what do you feel? Power? I mean, you know. Um, how society like treats us? I guess we we feel kind of like. We're not appreciated, I guess, what, what I'm trying to say. And um, we're trying to give back some um, identity back to our people. Mm-hmm. Anyone else have any thoughts about that? Well, one of the reasons why we have this workshop is a uh, com- uh, commodification of Asian culture. And if you walk down the street, you, you, you see people with uh, Asian tattoos and Chinese character uh, tattoos on their arm. Uh, chopsticks in their hair and they don't know how to appreciate that and you can see it's out there it's everywhere but yet we as a community we're still very in, we're, we're invisible and it seems like they they want us to use us as a kind of profit but they don't mm-hmm. see us as a culture as history and as art mm-hmm. and we want people to appreciate our culture mm-hmm. and not just make a few dollars off of it so in terms of the media, how are you going to make the media aware of that? Because, you know, the media actually on some level, like KPFA, is, is more accessible, like in these big corporations. How do you go about doing that? I mean, do you like try and raise money so you can, you know, have this big Hong Kong filmmaker come in or get Oliver Stone to like fund? I mean, how do you do that? Because, you know, that's the issue that even here on KPFA and Grassroots Radio, you know, there's not a lot of voices out there. How are you planning on doing that? How are you planning on getting more to change the media or get more folks out there in the media. Well, actually, to make an influence, we want we want people to be aware first. Then they can kind of address the issue and take action. And if you don't know about something, you really can't do much about it. So what we're trying to do is just to get the community together, and then we can rise up against that. Mm-hmm. And so awareness is one of the goals of the mm-hmm. API Institute. So would you like um, explain the history of, let's say? Chinese in America, or are you going to like? Um, how would you, how would you go about? You know, because sometimes people think that they actually understand what's on the TV, and that that represents a community. You know, I mean, there's there's just different ways of. You, you see, it, you want people to get educated, and how, how are you going to do that though? Because there's just so limited uh, resources out there. Well, we'll um, t- we want them to be educated, so we want them to be aware, right? So what we'll do is like we'll have we'll provide like I guess examples and ex- like information that they don't have access to every day i mean like basically school is like we follow we live by the textbook i guess and what we try to do is we try to give information that we you can't find like um anywhere else is like not mainstream and so this information um uh i guess is different and i guess it'll stand out uh-huh well you know the other thing i wanted to say is that there's there's kind of this negative imagery of Asians and, and some of that you can see like all the war movies you know when they run it on TV and this is World War Two, and this is you know you know those things get run over and over again uh, and then there's the exotic Asian woman who's like a picture bride or something like that blah 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 geisha you know the whole old, old thing that gets done over and over and over again and people actually believe it because sometimes that's their only connection to Asians on the other hand, there's like things where popular Asian culture is getting very popular now. And so you have even groups like the Wu-Tang Clan. They take the name because they like, you know, martial arts. 
there's a sort of like a good and a bad thing about that, right? I mean, what do you guys think? You think that there's the good outweighs the bad or, you know, because people say, well, you know, I really like Chinese martial arts and, you know, that's why, you know. Well, I don't think that the good will ever outweigh the bad. Like, people will always concentrate on the bad and Asians are rising up, but not everyone sees the dark side of what us Asians have to go through, like immigrants and how people treat us. Like, nobody sees that on TV or anything. And that's how our youth group came, because we make public service announcements that used to be aired on KQED, and we would show, like, other people, like, this is what we had to go through. And hopefully they could kind of see it, and that's mm -hmm. one way to kind of stop it. Mm -hmm. Let me talk with you later, because Apex Express is looking for just like that. We, we, we're we <laughs> looking for submissions, uh, things that people mix, you know. That's very important. The first week of every month, we have an API, Asian Pacific Islander Hip Hop Show. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we look for that all the time. And Tony, remember I said that? Yeah. You know, I, I have to actually start to wrap it up. So before shout-outs, I know you guys want to do some shout-outs. Tony, you want to say just a few words and, like, where people can learn more about the Youth Institute that's happening? Uh, sure. If folks are interested in learning more about the API Youth Institute, or if you're an Asian uh, Pacific Islander young person, or you're with an organization and you just want information, email me at tvnguyen at afsc.org. Or you can uh, holler at G and she'll, she'll give you the information. But I also want to just mention real quick about the Institute. You know, like uh, G had mentioned that there's there's workshops that look at media images and also uh, um, uh, drugs. But there's the, the, the Institute is covering uh, health. There's there's workshops that focus on health. There's fo workshops that focus on political education and empowerment and also culture. And uh, culture is a big part of, of the, the mm -hmm. Institute this time around. I just want to say that some of the entertainment they're having here and the youth have organized this Magnetic North, Rap MC folks, Phil M Club, which is comedy, wushu, martial arts, uh, piano, uh, reincarnation, which is a hip-hop dance group, and David That's Wynn, right. spoken word. So all these things are coming up. So we're kind of, we have to wind this up right now. So I know you guys want to do shout out. So I'm going to let the mic just be open. Just don't use seven dirty words. Just say <laughs> your shout outs. Starting with, yeah. Why don't we just go around? Oh, well, we just want to give a early happy birthday shout out to Ivy, who works in Act One. Okay. I want to give a shout out to all the members of AAA. And to Jane Kim, our coordinator, and also to my uh, Muni bus driver, he's really cool, and also to the lady who served me breakfast in the cafeteria every morning at Lowell High School, San Francisco. Jesse, why don't you go ahead first? Uh, I want to give a shout out, an early birthday shout out to my boy Stella. Happy birthday. Okay. Uh, I just, just want to say what's up to all my friends in uh, San Francisco, I guess, on high, Lowell High School. Okay. Uh, last but not least, I just want to make a shout out to all the folks that are working on the I API Youth Institute. You know, we're expecting like 120 young people and 30 adult allies. And the youth have been working really hard on this for the last few months. And so, so a shout out to all y'all. Mad loves from Tony and um, keep rocking it. We'll do it on Saturday. Oh, and one more shout out to Mr. Schmidt, my social studies <laughs> teacher. He went to Berkeley too. And this is G, a shout out to all you invisible Asian and Pacific Islanders out there. This is Apex Express, KPFA's Asian Pacific Islander show right here on KPFA 94.1 FM and KPFB in Berkeley and KFC in Fresno. We're going to go out uh, with some music. I think you guys might like this because it combines like uh, South Asian or Indian heritage with hip hop. And so I really love playing these, this music by this group uh, called The Mall. They have a new EP out. So why don't mm -hmm. we check that out right now? Mr. Bright and early, wake up on Monday.
money, miss it bright and early. like that that was the mall and if you like this music uh we're going to have ticket giveaways at the end of this calendar but right up first i wanted to say what's coming up in the community first up america undercover rehab is the title of oscar award-winning filmmaker steven okazaki's new documentary it's about five young adults trying to kick their addictions and repair their lives and it airs on hbo on april 18th and if you're interested in this film and if you're interested in what uh, steven okazaki has uh, done recently go to www.farfilm.com farfilm.com and that is all one word and also if you're interested in um the uh South Asian Sikh community, there are like major parades and celebration. It's the Harvest Festival called Vaisak. One is happening in Fresno, California, and if you're interested in, in this um, very exciting, if you like Bangra, if you like that last music, this is a community where it actually uh, comes from, um, the Sikh community. And the address of that, the email web address for that is www.jakara.org. That's J-A-K-A-R-A dot O-R-G, and it's happening in Fresno, California, starting on June 30th. So if you have a chance, very, should be a lot of fun. Also, Asian Women's Shelter was founded to address the needs of battered Asian women and their children, and they are going to be having a major fundraiser called Generations for the Asian Women's Shelter, and that's going to be happening. Um, you have to RSVP by April 27th, and it's um, an annual event, May 12th at St. Mary's Cathedral. So women in the Asian American community and supporting them, uh, the Asian Women's Shelter has been around for many years doing that all the time, and for more information on that, please call 415-751-7001. And again, take out your pencils and papers because if you're in a crisis situation or know somebody that can, this organization also provides bilingual, multilingual social workers. And if there's a crisis, you can also call the crisis line 415 751 
also the Asian Law Caucus, who has been helping immigrants and Asian American Pacific Islanders for many, many years. They are having their anniversary dinner called In Defense of Civil Rights and includes uh, Reverend Lloyd Wake, who has been around for many years in the community. He was also at Glide Memorial. Also, if you want information about that and reservations, call 415-896-1701 or extension 131. And again, the Asian Law Caucus is having their dinner Saturday, April the 23rd in San Francisco. So if you're interested in supporting an organization like that, please do uh, check out Asian Law Caucus. And I just want to go into our next feature really from here. Um, and um, during this feature, if people are interested in going to see Damal, you heard their music earlier. Uh, Damal's um, going to be at Club 6 on April the 23rd. Club 6 is in San Francisco. They're going to have music, uh, both uh, DJs, live. Um, they're going to have classical music, too, with live tablas. Again, that's in San Francisco. Saturday, April the 23rd, we're going to give away a pair of tickets to see DeMond in San Francisco at Club 6, which is on 66th Street in um, San Francisco near Market. And we're going to give away tickets to the 10th callers, a pair of tickets to the 10th callers, right in this next uh, feature that we're going to be doing. So, folks, uh, wait up a little bit, and you can, we're going to get right to you. And this next feature really has to do with the, the detentions that are still happening in this country. There was a recent case of the, a detention of a 16-year-old Bangladeshi girl in New York, and she is but the latest in a series of frightening uh, U.S. dragnets of mostly immigrants and Muslims in America. The 16-year-old Bangladeshi girl's case um, is still pending, and apparently she was picked up on charges of being a terrorist so um, it is uh, an issue that brings us to our next uh, feature which is actually an exhibit the exhibit is called disappeared in america and it is actually about these detentions and deportations of people from the u.s at this particular exhibit which is in the queens new york but it, it's also available on the internet they have audio clips video clips about voices of the voiceless and they all express uh, what happened to them how they were harassed imprisoned and definitely a lot of them some others were tied up and put on flights to foreign countries other people were tortured while over there one man has since died in detentions their families are left in desperate circumstances and you can see and hear all of this as part of the exhibit disappeared in America and again it is in New York but for folks who want to visit it online it's possible to do so and I'm going to give that out in the bit I first wanted to say that uh, the visible collective put this exhibit together with the goal of raising awareness about the effects of post 9-11 crackdown on civil liberties and human rights one of the uh, collect collective members Naeem Mohayamen says that he knew the work had to be about humanizing these people and so what you're going to be hearing next is actually audio uh, off of their site and uh, it's a short clip it's um, an interview of a young Afghani man who was picked up uh, and his name is Shah so I'd like to take this time to listen to an excerpt from Disappeared in America Yes, I'm a U.S. citizen uh, natural to naturalization and um, I have my own business uh, auto mechanic shop we were on our way to Tahoe. There was two cars. One was me and my brother. We, he was following me. And we were stopped for speeding. And when we were stopped, uh, at the very beginning when the cop stopped us, he, as soon as he looked, that we looked Middle Eastern, and uh, I could tell by the way he was talking to us that he didn't treat us very nice. The way he was questioning us, the way he was, he basically... Uh, pulled out my brother and put handcuffs on him for no reason just he said that you guys were going too fast all of a sudden out of nowhere he says if if you talk to me too much I'm gonna have to take you to jail and then he makes a comment I quote he says uh, believe me with a name like yours you won't be very famous in jail and at that point I knew that he was looking at it as in a racial way he stopped me and, um, of course, cited me for going uh, 110 plus. And obviously, I knew I wasn't going that fast. So, and then I went to court. And 
at the court, once again, uh, they treated us the same way. The judge didn't even want to hear my side of the story. And when I asked again the judge that I want to see some kind of proof that I was going this fast, he says, well, it's your word against the cop, and I take his word for it. So I had no, no choice but to just pay the fine. After I came to pay the fine, uh, uh, I saw a couple of police officers coming towards me and said that uh, uh, you guys got to go clean up the bathroom. I said, what do you mean clean up the bathroom? He says, well, one of you went to the bathroom and uh, clocked up the toilet, and now you got to go and clean it. So he was... He had his hand in the, on his gun, both of them, there's two of them, and while well, he was saying it, and I said, well, what if we don't? He says, we're going to make you to go clean it. So the way I looked at the situation, I just, uh, you know what, and then gave us something so we can go clean it. And they gave us uh, a plunger and a few other things that we went in. I may add that they didn't even give us any gloves or anything. We just went there and uh, cleaned up the toilet. Believe it or not, for a few days, I didn't even want to look at the food when I was, I mean, uh, it was disgusting. I even told this to the judge that uh, for the first time in my life since I've been here, I felt like a foreigner. And till that day, this was my country. I, I still love this country, and I don't think it as a, as a second place for me. This is, this is where I'm at, and this is where I work, and this is my country, whether people are like it or not. But that day, I felt like I was treated like a trash. I mean... Like, uh, I didn't belong here, so, and it made me feel sad, yes. That was an audio clip from the exhibit and a website, Disappeared in America. And when you go there, um, you can go and see and hear people who have been picked up, detained, um, a lot of different kinds of people actually from South Asian Muslims. Uh, families of the disappeared are also uh, speaking on this, uh, the audio clips there. Um, the a web address for that, if you, you want to check it out, is www.disappearedinamerica.org. And that's all one word. Again, www.disappearedinamerica.org. And the people that put it together is the Visible Collective. And again, this is Apex Express here in Berkeley, KPFA, and uh, in Fresno as well, KFCF in Fresno. And my name is G, and uh, I want to say that um, this is the show that you'll be hearing, Asian and Pacific Islander Voices, also the first week of every month we have Asian American Hip Hop and Voices Hot Topics uh, with Social Concerns, so we do appreciate your support, and we hope that you keep turning into the show every Thursday night here. You can also go to the web and hear us on www www.kpfa.org and the shows are archived there I also want to say we were playing Damal earlier so we do have tickets to give away a pair of tickets to give away to the Damal show which is happening Saturday April the 23rd and we're going to have they're going to have things like DJs South Asian drum and break uh, break beats, folk, classical, live tabla, all kinds of things there. So if you want to go, check it out. It's at Club 6. We're going to take the 10th caller. And Club 6 is um, on 66th Street. And uh, if you want to call in, please do call 510-848-4425, 510-448-4425. We're going to take the 10th caller. So please, uh, if you're interested in Please call in. My name is G. Thanks to Curtis on the board. We're going to go out with some music, friends, Asian crisis, and then go right into the Bonnie Simmons show. So thanks so much for listening. Mm-hmm. 